If you're growing up in the 90s, or frankly, even alive, then I guarantee you recognize this image. I don't even have to reveal it for you to know. It is in the title of this video, after all. SpongeBob SquarePants has been going on for 24 years at this point, which is an achievement on its own. It's beat out every other cartoon. And while I can't speak for the later seasons, the early seasons have something special about them. There's something so unique and priceless that just can't seem to be replicated anymore. And I want to explore why today, because when I look at other cartoons around the same time, I can remember them, but it's nothing like to the extent of Spongebob. Other shows, it's like, oh yeah, I remember that episode with like that villain or this plot line, but nothing much else. Spongebob I can quote on a daily basis. If I had to describe the early seasons, specifically seasons one through three, which I know everyone talks about, I would say that they're simple goofy plots that are mature. And mature probably isn't the first word that comes to mind when you think of Spongebob. But let me explain. The show seemed to be built around the idea that kids could comprehend complex messages. It was something that they could use in their everyday life and wasn't there just for entertainment. The episode Texas dealt with issues of not feeling belonged, homesickness, and being in a new place. Hookie showed the realities of addiction, albeit it was toned down, and even how doing it once could get you hooked. Grandma's Kisses portrayed why trying to grow up fast wasn't the best way to be treated as an adult. And Pressure, as the name suggests, showed how peer pressure ended up hurting others. These mature themes showed a level of understanding from the creators, and it was made for both parents and kids, where both of them could be entertained by it. They didn't think that kids are stupid and can't function on their own, or don't have the brain capacity to appreciate stories. They wanted to make things relatable to everyone, and relatability is another word I would describe Spongebob with. And you can see this effect in real life. How many of you when you were kids loved Spongebob and Squidward was the mean nasty neighbor? But then as you grew up and became an adult, you realized that Squidward's just kind of normal and just wants to be left alone in his house. Once you grew up and found out what the realities are of having a neighbor or a co-worker like Spongebob, you realize that sometimes you need a break away from them. Okay, the show dealt with mature themes, sure. But not every episode was like that. And that moved to the second kind of episodes they would make. Ones that were just simple. Your Shoes was about Spongebob forgetting how to tie his shoes. The Snowball Effect was about a snowball fight between Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward. The Bully had Spongebob worried about getting beat up after school. Scaredy Pants was about Halloween and Spongebob wanting to be scary. And I can go on and on, and you, you get the idea of it. These concepts and plots aren't complex and create a relatable situation. And then sometimes they throw a heavy plot at you, like the Nasty Patty, Dying for Pie, Survival of the Idiots, or Crab Borg. Seriously, all these involve death or torture in some way. Toned down, albeit, but it's still there. One of the reasons people remember the Nasty Patty so much is because it was about Spongebob and Mr. Krabs covering up a murder. And I know I've just been throwing around a lot of episode names, but if you've seen them, then you know what I'm talking about. The main idea is that Spongebob Squarepants never try to be something that it wasn't. It's a wacky show about undersea animals, and the episode plots revolve around that. There is no concepts that are set in stone because anything can happen, which makes it memorable. Things just seem to happen at random, objects explode or catch on fire, and this just adds to the bizarre nature of it. With only an 11 minute time slot per episode, things had to happen fast, but it never felt rushed. It didn't feel like we were missing crucial parts of anything. The creators had fun exploring this world and introducing characters to whatever situation they could conceive. I think good art can be felt, and when something has passion and drive behind it, you can feel it, and this show oozes creativity. And I want to talk about the main characters, because like any good show, they're able to carry an episode all on their own. The creators were never afraid of making episodes with just Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward, or some combination of those. Hell, there's even an episode with no talking at all, and yet it's still a great episode. Granted, it was due to an issue with some of the recording equipment, but it's still entertaining. But why does it work? In a world that pushes away from silent film to where people find it boring, how did an episode of Spongebob with no script become a fan favorite? Well, it's because of the characters. The characters on their own are entertaining, but specifically when they're paired with Spongebob, they're at their peak. Spongebob's a blank canvas and can adapt to any situation, and it always seems natural. The creators can come up with any situation, 
take a combination of Squidward, SpongeBob, and Patrick, put them in, and the episode becomes an instant classic. Take Club SpongeBob, where the trio gets stranded in the kelp forest. It wouldn't be as fun to watch without Squidward balancing out Patrick and SpongeBob's strange behavior. Pizza Delivery is a classic because it puts two opposite personalities together on a common mission. SpongeBob and Squidward must deliver a pizza to a customer. It's simple, but the interactions are unique. I also want to mention how unique the underwater theme is. The environment and characters stand out because it was unfamiliar to us. It's not set in a typical city or suburb, or has main characters being humans or dogs. It's set in the ocean, which gives unlimited potential to how things look and act. Can't light a fire underwater? Screw it, let's make it so they can, because who cares? We make the rules around here. Another thing is the title cards, they're very unique. The art style that they chose for each episode, not only does it set the mood for it and the theme, but it creates an image that's tied to an episode. Seeing that one image over and over again before an episode creates an imprint on you. And also the unique gross-ups they would use in Spongebob. Another reason why the Nasty Patty episode is so famous and so memorable is because of that one image of the Nasty Patty. And the show's famous for these hyper-realistic images that contrast the simple art style of Spongebob. They just kind of suddenly appear at moments. And I don't think I've even begun to scratch the surface of what makes this TV show so excellent. And it may not even be possible. It's hard to explain things that we just kind of take for granted. I can't just say, oh, the script's good and the quotes are good, because that doesn't allow for further conversation. I don't know what went on in the writer's rooms or how it was created, but I can talk about what I see in the episodes. And it brings up the question, is the writing great and quotes memorable because we've heard it so many times, or is it memorable because it's great writing? It's probably both. And as the show progressed, I feel like they got away from these simple concepts, and they started trying to expand the universe of Spongebob. Past Season 3 has some great episodes still, but it's nothing like how the show first was. And that's okay, I don't think I fit the demographic anymore. The animation and facial expressions that everyone makes has seemed so exaggerated. And it's straight away from the idea that a good story could entertain kids, to here's this goofy, funny thing to look at and entertain you for a while. But that's just the perspective of an adult who shouldn't care this much about a kid's cartoon. The reality of it is, is that Spongebob is a great show for anyone to watch. I'm sure many parents enjoyed watching the first three seasons with their kids because I had something in there for everyone. I'm just glad that I got to experience the show in its prime.